How do you feel about roadkill? <laughs> Let's start with the obvious. It's gross. It's sad. It's expensive. But it's preventable. Before humans, wildlife moved where they pleased for basic needs like food, water, shelter, and mates. But today, roads and development cross-cut and fragment even our most wild places. Crossing a road is a relatively new survival skill and a difficult one to master. For example, each day, over 26,000 vehicles travel through the Pigeon River Gorge on Interstate 40 in between Asheville, North Carolina and Knoxville, Tennessee. This raging four-lane highway cuts through the mountains just outside Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The Smokies is the number one most visited park in the country and famous for its iconic wildlife. And for those of you that have traveled this stretch of 40, you know it's no Sunday cruise. The interstate winds through steep, rugged, breathtakingly beautiful terrain. But you don't dare get distracted, and you keep your eyes on the road. You're gripping the wheel, traveling 60 miles an hour, flanked by tractor trailers, riding your tail, and roaring past you. You have one goal. Get through the gorge as safely as possible. Now, step out of your vehicle and onto the side of the road. Imagine you're a bear, a mother bear with three cubs, heading up the mountain towards a food source your mama bear once showed you. What happens next? Come on, baby. Come on, get going. There we go. <laughs> you have a choice to make. Risk the dangers of entering the roadway or make do where you are and go hungry. Unfortunately, neither option is ideal. Many animals choose option one. And this brings us back to the problem, roadkill. The Federal Highway Administration estimates 365 million animals are killed on US roads each year. Do the math. That's a million animals a day. And if you're one of the unlucky travelers that hits a large mammal with your vehicle, we're talking thousands of dollars in damages and repairs, not to mention the risk of serious injury or death. These collisions collectively cost us $12 billion a year. It's a lose-lose situation for everyone involved. Our transportation networks were created to move humans, goods, services, all things we rely on for our survival. But now we inhibit wildlife movement, which impacts their survival. Is this just the price we pay for modern day travel? I'm proud to share there's a collaborative effort to address this issue right here in our own backyard. It's called Safe Passage, the I-40 Pigeon River Gorge Wildlife Crossings Project. Over 100 individuals from 20 organizations are dedicating their time, talents, and expertise designing solutions to prevent roadkill. It's a fantastic team of scientists, natural resource managers, transportation experts, government agencies, tribal leaders, concerned citizens, and more. Each person brings a valuable and diverse skill set to the table. That's why the collaborative is so strong. 
We know Western North Carolina is a biodiversity hotspot. The spine of the Appalachian Mountains is its own highway, or wildway, as we like to call it, for wildlife movement and seasonal migration. This makes it not only an interesting research site, but a conservation priority. Protecting and connecting natural landscapes will assure wildlife have the freedom to move. It's a holistic approach to sustain biodiversity. Scientists from Wildlands Network and the National Parks Conservation Association teamed up to better understand animal behavior in the Pigeon River Gorge. They used motion-sensitive wildlife cameras, roadkill surveys, and GPS collar monitoring. The research helps us understand animal behavior patterns and pinpoints wildlife vehicle collision hotspots. Analyzing how roads affect the landscape is called road ecology. And gathering this information is a key step in identifying where to add or enhance infrastructure to reduce collisions. With research-driven design, we can entice wildlife to use safe passages. So what does that even look like? Put yourself back into the mindset of the bear again. Or if you want to change it up, it's fine. Maybe this time you're a deer and you're an elk. Ooh, and maybe we have some bobcats out there. All right, it's time to move and you need to decide what is safe. Do you feel comfortable crawling through a deep, dark, wet culvert unsure where or if it empties out? What if it was opened up, larger, lighter, with a nice natural surface to walk on? How about traversing a rocky embankment under a bridge? Or instead, a simple graded trail Are you ready to cross at road level and dodge the cars? Or would you rather skip all of that stress and leisurely walk over the roadway on an overpass? Although these structures were not originally designed with wildlife in mind, some are using them as is, and that's great. But not all individuals or even species are wired the same. They can be curious, but cautious. Adaptable, but apprehensive. Some do not like walking through tunnels. Some don't like walking on the rigid surface of a pipe. And then there are just some physical limitations, like for all of you out there with antlers, <laughs> sorry, you're not fitting through this. Inclusivity is key. When designed correctly, these structures have been shown to reduce motorist collisions involving wildlife by 97%. They're showing up in other parts of the world, like Europe, Banff National Park in Canada, Utah, and Florida. And soon, we can add Western North Carolina to this growing list. Because the Safe Passage vision, it's becoming reality. <laughs> the North Carolina Department of Transportation is currently replacing a bridge on Interstate 40 in the Pigeon River Gorge at the Harmon Den exit, where we often see elk. The new bridge design will include two paths, one on each side of Cold Springs Creek to help wildlife move safely from one side of the interstate to the other 
under the roadway. A nine foot tall fence will guide animals to the trails, away from traffic, and under the bridge. And according to NCDOT, this is just the beginning. They want to do more. Western North Carolina can be a leader in transforming our transportation networks. The I-40 Pigeon River Gorge Wildlife Crossings Project can help us establish a precedent for future road design in North Carolina and beyond. If we can successfully build bridges and reconnect the Pigeon River Gorge, it can be done elsewhere. And it will. Because in 2021, the Wildlife Crossings pilot program was established under the Federal Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, providing $350 million in grants to projects like ours that seek to reduce the number of wildlife vehicle collisions while improving habitat connectivity for terrestrial and aquatic species. This is the first time in US history specific funding has been allocated for overpasses, underpasses, and fencing to restore historic wildlife movement corridors. And the Safe Passage Collaborative is ready, especially because we know climate change will instigate more wildlife movement and the rate of human population and development in Western North Carolina is rapidly increasing. Reconnecting our natural landscapes is a win for human safety, a win for economics, and a win for wildlife. And I'm pretty sure all of you out there can get on board with at least one of these concepts to help make the world a better place. We must also make the effort to reconnect ourselves with nature. We can learn lessons from wildlife. We can live with intentionality in ways that don't negatively impact our surroundings. And we can harness our amazing potential to problem solve with innovation and a willingness to work together. So while you're driving, slow down and watch for wildlife. Watch its brilliance, its beauty, its creativity. Watch with the intention of protecting it. Thank you. <laughs>